Ladies and gentlemen, I missed you. We have not been here. We have not done this in quite some time. We've been posting every single day on the Flog Fantasy YouTube channel. Hope you've had a chance to hang out with us there. Just wanted to bring that up just in case anybody's watching that and think we just went completely dark. But anyway, we're going to dive into about 10 to 15 dynasty trades here as we usually do. Have a big trend in this video of trading for studs going through and giving up multiple pieces and getting the best player back in the deal i think that these trades will be great examples of what you can look to do in your own league but before we get into it go down there drop a like on this video subscribe to the channel if you play dynasty fantasy football and of course if you play dynasty fantasy football make sure you go over to flogfantasy.com check out all my dynasty fantasy football rankings over there you can also find all the premium content of all your favorite content creators and when you sign up with promo code flock you are going to get 30 percent off any subscription and yours truly will break down your dynasty fantasy football team with the podcast with promo code flock but i think that should be about it let's go ahead and let's dive into our first deal this deal is going to be Cam Akers for a 2025 first round pick. This is the type of trade that you need to be making. Yes, Cam Akers has a, I want to say, relatively high ceiling, right? Cam Akers can go out there and potentially can be a three down running back for the Los Angeles Rams if he is fully 100% back from the torn Achilles. And maybe the Rams are better than people expect this year. Right now, if you're looking at Las Vegas Sportsbooks, they have the Rams with a win total of six and a half games. So right now it's priced as if the Los Angeles Rams will be a bad team this next season, but hell, and maybe they're wrong. Maybe Vegas is wrong and the Rams are actually good to go and they are back to their 2022 form. In reality, there's just so much downside to go through and uh, trade away your 2025 first for Cam Akers. What happens if Akers never fully recovers from the torn Achilles? Keep in mind, the most we've seen Akers really produce is in a four game stretch. If you're looking at where he's being drafted in 2023 drafts right now on underdog, he's the running back 24. So he's a low end RB two, high end RB three. The man is going to be off his rookie contract next off season. If I can take a running back like Cam Akers and sell him for a 2025 first, I'm doing it. Now going over to our next deal, um, this trade isn't even fun to talk about. It's such a landslide. Someone traded away Ayuk and Khalil Herbert and got back Rashad White, Chris Olave. What is so funny about this, and this is why if you're going to consider making a dynasty trade, please go look at something. I mean, preferably you're going to flogfantasy.com and you're looking at some dynasty rankings so you can say, okay, let's not do this. But even if you are not on flogfantasy.com, at least like pull up 2023 ADP on underdog where you can see, oh, okay, um, Chris Olave has an ADP of wide receiver 12. Brandon Ayuk is down there sitting with an ADP of wide receiver 30. Oh, let's look at the running backs. Oh, uh, Rashad White right now is sitting with an ADP of 26. And then Khalil Herbert is sitting with an ADP of running back 40. And you're getting the younger asset on the side of the deal in the dynasty for a trade like this should never happen. You should be able to at minimum pull up some ADP, do some napkin math and go, okay, well, um, why the hell would I ever send away Chris Olave for this package? Now going over to our next trade, this is a Jamar Chase one. And it's interesting okay initially i didn't think it was close but then we saw cooper cup so if you're looking at this you have cup jackson smith and jigba and a 2024 first versus jamar chase i think this comes down to the league settings that you're playing with right obviously cooper cup pushing 30 now cooper cup in 2024 will be worth less than he is today in dynasty but hopefully in 2024 Jackson Smith and Jigba will be worth more than he is today. Hopefully, and you can pretty much be guaranteed that the 2024 first is going to have more value than it has today. I would say if you're playing in an extremely shallow format, where say it's a 10 team league and you only start eight guys, then might as well go ahead and get Jamar Chase. But I don't hate the idea of going and getting Cup JSN in the 2024 first. If it's a league where depth matters at all, because you wouldn't be too surprised, right? If Cooper Cup goes out there and gives you the same production as Jamar Chase this next season, and then if you also have the long term value of JSN and the 2024 first, pretty interesting. Now, going over to our next deal, we're gonna be looking at Traylon Burks versus Javante Williams. I think you have to take Traylon Burks here. Now, with Javante, yes, he is a running back that at times has flashed an elite level ceiling, right? At times, people have been very excited about what Javante Williams may turn into. But the reality is, Javante Williams is a running back coming off a destroyed knee 
where you don't really know what his availability will be this next season. And at the same time, we have never seen him be a workhorse back for a prolonged stretch of games. I mean, you're going back to his time in college where he split the field with Michael Carter. If you look early on in his NFL career, he split the field with Melvin Gordon. And this isn't prime Melvin Gordon. This is late career Melvin Gordon that gets cut right after. I mean, it's not like it's a superb talent there. If you're looking at where he's going in 2023 drafts right now, I mean, Javante Williams being drafted as the running back 29. So running back that was drafted in 2021. So he's coming near the end of his rookie deal at this point. So personally, I'm going to take the swing on Traylon Burks as a wide receiver that I thought was a pretty good prospect as a wide receiver that is fully healthy and going into year two. Now, our next deal is going to be Jerry Judy as well as DeAndre Swift for T. Higgins. Now, yes, Jerry Judy is exciting. Now, yes, Jerry Judy had a great stretch at the end of this past season, and he was the guy that I was rooting on this past year. Y'all know I have been the leader of the Jerry Judy wide receiver one in Denver fan club. I mean, we were laughing at everybody hyping up Cortland Sutton last season. But if we're going to be realistic with ourselves, while Jerry Judy clearly has cemented himself as the wide receiver one with this team, Cortland Sutton will be healthy this next year. Tim Patrick will be healthy this next year. You will also add in Marvin Mims in the second round. Hell, KJ Hamler may be healthy. So if you're looking at all the additional wide receiver depth that they have here in Denver, I don't expect the wide receiver one to see the same level of target share that he historically would have had. DeAndre Swift, in my mind, is not a great fit with Jalen Hurts, given the fact that Swift wins as a pass catcher. Historically speaking, those rushing quarterbacks aren't checking the ball down at a very high rate because they can run it themselves when the pocket collapses. So personally, I would love to leverage the hype of someone like Jerry Judy, get out on DeAndre Swift while you still can, and pivot over for a locked and loaded wide receiver one in Dynasty like T. Higgins. Now going over to our next trade, we're going to be looking at Khalil Herbert as well as Christian Watson for Hollywood Brown and Jacoby Myers. Going back to what we are talking about previously, this is a horrible deal, okay? You should never, never see a trade happen like this, right? I mean, first thing is, just go to flockfantasy.com, pull up the dynasty rankings, look at where these guys line up and say, yeah, why the hell would I ever do this? If you're not on flockfantasy.com, you can always just go to underdog fantasy and there pull up, okay, well, Christian Watson's a wide receiver that's going into year two that we can assume continues to improve not only his overall production, but at the same time as dynasty fantasy football value, he's being drafted as the wide receiver 20. And in comparison, if we're going to be looking at Hollywood Brown, who was drafted back in 2019, someone that's just a completely different arc, he's being drafted as the wide receiver 33. Plus, you'd probably rather have Khalil Herbert over Jacoby Myers. I just don't understand how a deal like this happens when you should have access to simple resources that tell you, hey, probably not a good one. You probably want to be going with the guy that has higher expectations for this next season, plus at the same time is much younger. But of course, if y'all aren't already drafting on Underdog, I'm sure y'all have seen us live streaming there every single day on the main channel. We'll be live streaming drafts on Underdog every day until the season starts. You can get in a draft today when you sign up with promo code FLOCK. They're going to match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to 100. You're going to get my 2023 Dynasty Fantasy Football rankings and a free trial to FLOCKFANTASY.COM as well with promo code FLOCK. And you can find that link in the description or the comment section. But let's go ahead and let's dive into our next trade. This one is a little interesting. And I know every single person and their mom's going to be down there in the comment section screaming, oh my gosh, Mason, how the hell are you saying this is interesting? It's Justin Fields we're talking about. Now, yes, I am going to go with the Justin Fields side of this. Full transparency, I have Justin Fields in, I believe, four Dynasty Leagues. And every single Dynasty League that I had Justin Fields, I went through and offered him for the 101 in this year's rookie draft. I don't think we had a single person except, but I just want to put it out there. I know most people would take Fields over Bijan Robinson in Dynasty. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take Bijan. But after that number one overall pick, I think you're pretty confident in saying based off the rushing upside we had with Justin Fields this past year, he is right there and more valuable than any other asset that you have. So I think you take Justin Fields over the 103. Now, when it comes to Devonta Smith versus the 104, 104, you're either going to be looking at Stroud or Jameer Gibbs, which in my mind, I think you would rather have Smith over both players. So if you love Quentin Johnston, if you are a true rebuilding roster, I understand why you'd want to go ahead and why you would want to take the picks and get Quentin Johnston on top of those two elite level rookies. 
But if you are a contending team, if you're ready to win right now, I think you go Justin Field Smith. I think it's an actual interesting and good trade. I know a lot of people are going to scream that it's the Justin Field side. Now, our next deal we're going to be looking at is the 103 for the 105 and 2024 first. So the 105 ended up being Jameer Gibbs. So you essentially trade away Bryce Young for Jameer Gibbs and a future first. In my mind, I love it. If we can stack up 2024 first at this time and give us a lot more flexibility during the season to go through and make additional trades with our dynasty team, perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, this next one is a similar, right? You're trading away essentially Anthony Richardson for Tua and a 2024 first. Now, I think the vast majority of people here are going to prefer to go through and take Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson is going well above Tua in underdog leagues just for 2023 right now. If I'm pulling this up, Anthony Richardson is going as the quarterback 10. Tua is going as the quarterback 12. And Anthony Richardson is a freaking rookie. So, of course, people would rather have Richardson over Tua in Dynasty. But at the same time, if I'm looking at this, hell, you're getting the extra first round pick where you have a ton of flexibility with that. And I just generally think that Tua is severely underrated, both from an NFL and a dynasty fantasy football perspective. Tua led the NFL in adjusted yards per pass attempt this past season, directly ahead of Mahomes and Jalen Hurts. Obviously, he doesn't have the same rushing upside as you get with Anthony Richardson this next year. But I mean, if you're going to get an additional 2024 first and a wide receiver upgrade, I'm going to go with the Tua side. Now, our next deal, Chris Godwin versus a first and a second. Why would you ever make this deal right now? I, I want to go through and talk about the thought process behind this, right? Because you can maybe say, well, Mason, come on, man. I'm a contender. I need points in the starting lineup today. I need to go through and I need to win this league in 2023. My rebuttal to that is how much of a contender are you really? If adding in Chris Godwin right now, a low end wide receiver two in these fantasy drafts is truly going to move the needle for you. If you're telling me you win the league with Chris Godwin and lose the league without Chris Godwin, I don't think you're a strong enough to contender to go through and start trading away your future picks. Now, if you are truly a contender, here's what you do. You hold those 2024 picks. You wait until during the season, figure out exactly what you need into your starting lineup, get confirmation that you are a contending team. And then once we know, yep, I'm a contending team. And all I have to do is go through and add in another producing wide receiver. And we look across our league and we say that rebuilding team over there with Chris Godwin, hell, Godwin is healthy. Godwin is producing. At that point, I will trade my 2024 first for Chris Godwin. Sure, if you want to do that in week four, week five, week six, go right ahead. There's no reason to do that right now. And then on top of this, if you are looking at what a true contender may want to do is instead of trading your 2024 straight up for Chris Godwin, maybe you take another wide receiver, someone in the ilk of Brandon Ayuk, and you go ahead and you attach your 2024 first there, and you get back a truly elite level wide receiver that will move the needle this next season. Just don't see why anybody would trade a 2024 first and second round pick right now for Godwin. I mean, in June, it makes no sense. Now, going over to our next deal, we're going to be looking at a future first versus Komet and the second. I want to be on record. I think Cole Komet is honestly better than the market indicates. If you're going to go through and look at Cole Komet's market share numbers, Komet wasn't that bad this past year. The issue is he was in the worst passing offense we've seen since 2010. So in reality, I think Komet's honestly a little disrespected, but come on, I'll take the 2024 first. Now, our next deal, we're going to be looking at Saquon Barkley versus Miles Sanders and a 2024 first. Reason I pulled this one up is I think this is a better deal if you are a contending team rather than selling your future first for a player like Chris Godwin. If you are truly a contender, what you do is you take a middling veteran plus the future first to go get the stud veteran. I'm not saying I like making that deal in June, but if you were truly a contender and you really needed to go make a move right now because we're bored, then that's the kind of trade you're looking at. Our next one, Bryce Young versus McLaurin in a future first. Probably going to take Bryce Young. At this point, Terry McLaurin's been like a low-end wide receiver two, high-end wide receiver three for four straight seasons. What's the upside? One after this, A.J. Brown versus Jordan Addison and a 2024 first. I actually like the Jordan Addison and 2024 first side of things. Obviously, if you're contending, maybe it makes sense to go through and get A.J. Brown. But this is a big thing that we talked about earlier this offseason. Going through and taking your stud veteran wide receiver, tearing down to a younger ascending asset, plus picking up the extra 2024 first, you can just win that trade in so many different ways. 
And then our next one, we're going to look at Watson and Ramadre Stevenson for the 109 and 110. This is clearly the Stevenson and Deshaun Watson side, regardless of if it's a one quarterback league or a super flex league. Keep in mind, if it's a one quarterback league, that 109 and 110 is going to be disgusting. There you're probably going to be looking at, say, um, Bryce Young with one of the picks and then Kondre Miller with another pick. Like, there's no reason to go ahead and take the picks there. Take Stevenson and take Watson. But I think that's all I have for you. Again, thank you so much for being a member of the flock and supporting the channel. I really hope you got something from this video. And of course, if you want more of these, drop a like, subscribe, and tell me down there in the comment section. Down there in the comment section, you can also find a link over to Underdog Fantasy, where you can get into a draft today. And hell, you know we're drafting there every single day on the live stream on the main channel. Last year, we drafted over 700 teams on Underdog. We won over $150,000. You better believe we are looking to run it back. Use promo code FLOCK for a 100% deposit match, plus my 2023 Dynasty Fantasy Football Rankings, and a free trial to FLOCKFANTASY.COM. But thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. Really do appreciate you. Really hope you have a great day. And really hope that we get to see you with the live stream on the Flog Fantasy YouTube channel later today.